and welcome to Catalan News. The Catalan elections have not even taken place yet, but parties are already discussing possible coalitions to form a new government. Ciutadans wants an alternative to pro-independence forces creating a unionist common front, but the socialists make clear today that they won't support them or any other right-wing option in forming a new government. Meanwhile, pro-independence parties are still working on their manifestos and on how to make their political goal of a new state possible, considering the Spanish government's attitude so far. Here at Catalan News, we'll give you the latest on this. We'll interview an official for Esquerda Republicana, the party leading the polls, and we'll explain how successful Catalan restaurants were at the Michelin Guide ceremony. Let's begin. A unionist government against independence might not be as easy to build as some political parties thought. Although the three pro-union parties, Ciutadans, the Socialists and the People's Party, join forces to suspend Catalonia's self-government after the declaration of independence, they could find it more difficult to work together to find an alternative majority to the current one. Today, the Socialists ruled out supporting unionist Ciutadans, currently the main opposition party for Catalonia's presidency after the elections. Both Ciutadans and the People's Party regretted this. These three parties not voting for the same candidate would make it highly unlikely for unionist parties to form a government, even in the event they win a majority in the chamber. The dream situation for the unionist Ciutadans party in Catalonia after the election is for the pro-independence parties to fall short of a majority. At the same time, they want a common unionist front to win the presidency. Yet this will not be so easy, even if the three unionist tickets get a majority in the chamber. The socialists say they will not back Ciutadans leader Inés Arrimadas for president, as they refuse to support parties on the right. This has caused outrage in Ciutadans and the People's Party. All three parties currently support direct rule of Catalonia, but today that unity was shown to have limits. One fight is for the unionist vote, while another just as intense is the left-wing opposition to Rajoy's measures. Catalonia in Camus' main candidate, Xavier Domènech, today claimed that the far-left coup party is not making it clear who they will support after the vote. Domènech also asked Esquerra Republicana leaders to show evidence of the violence they say Spain threatened if independence had been implemented. These are affirmations clearly to explain why, after the day that we made the declaration of independence, it didn't happen anything. Esquerra's Secretary-General Marta Rovira restated her accusations of Spain and she added that she is happy if the controversy is ensured that the Spanish authorities do not use violence again. Si aquest procés democràtic que nosaltres tenim ganes de liderar, dirigir, protagonitzar, de servir als ciutadans pot avançar sense una amenaça d'aquestes característiques sobre la taula és una bona notícia per tothom. Also today, the Spanish finance minister criticized Carlos Puigdemont after he announced he would give up his president's pension. Accepting it would have meant an acknowledgement that he is no longer the Catalan president. Puigdemont, who is still in exile in Belgium, claims to be the legitimate president despite being ousted by the Spanish executive. The Spanish legal system currently has a case open against Puigdemont, but he is not the only one, as the mayor of Reus is accused of hate speech for signing a manifesto criticizing Spanish police violence. With scores of people for and against the mayor waiting outside, in court he claimed that backing a manifesto in favor of coexistence can never be a crime. It's 29 days to go for the election, and one more day Brussels is part of the Catalan electoral campaign arena. Today, the exiled Catalan education minister, Clara Ponsati, deposed by the Spanish government, took part in an event in which students and teachers showed their support for her as a legitimate minister. She called on everyone to protect the Catalan school system from the Spanish measures against Catalan self-rule. Along with some union leaders, she said the current school system is the backbone of democracy and coexistence in Catalonia. La escola catalana és la columna vertebral de la democràcia, la cohesió social i la catalanitat i ho seguirà sent i la comunitat educativa està decidida que ho segueixi sent. Convido a tothom a plantar cara i a no tenir por davant de les agressions. Today we continue our series of interviews with the party currently leading the polls, Esquerra Republicana. The party has been part of the Catalan government in the past two years. In fact, Vice President Oriol Junqueras, leading Esquerra's ticket, is now in prison. He hinted that if his candidacy comes first in the vote and he is still held in custody, Secretary General Marta Rovira might become the first female Catalan president ever. 
In the past elections, it was part of the Together for Yes coalition, which got 62 out of 135 seats. Esqueda is part of the European Free Alliance coalition in the European Parliament as well, and is in favour of a Catalan state. Rovira said last week that independence has already been declared, and it is now time to build the republic. We speak now with Alfred Bosch, the leader of Esquerra Republicana in Barcelona City Council. Mr. Bosch, good evening. Good evening, how are you? Esquerra's Secretary General accused Spain of having threatened the Catalan government with using extreme violence and deaths in the streets if the independence process continued. During the campaign, are you going to show evidence of that? Well, we already saw a big deal of violence. On October the 1st, during the referendum, we saw the riot police beating up people, attacking defenseless, unarmed civilians, elderly ladies, whole families. Uh, we saw political prisoners, uh, members of the Catalan government elected democratically, being put in jail because of their ideas and their political action. We've seen all that. We don't need much more evidence. What uh, Marta Rovira said is completely sustainable. The Catalan leaders currently in jail in Madrid asked to be released and some of them claim to abide by Article 155. Is this just a strategy by their lawyers or does it also have political implications? Well, it's a bit of both. On the one side, there's of course a legal strategy. Uh, legal counsel has advised all these political prisoners, we insist, that their best defense is uh, following that direction. So uh, it, it's logical. On the other hand, it's also uh, acknowledging that uh, reality is there, that we have proclaimed the Republic, but it's a very little a little creature and uh, it, 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 we have to make it grow. But right now, reality is that there's a big deal of repression uh, being imposed on Catalan society and uh, that's what's happening. So we have to admit that uh, right now Article 155 is being deployed. Yes, we have to admit that. After Spain's reaction, is it possible to achieve independence, to go further? And how would you implement independence after the December 21st election? Well, of course, we're going to continue. We're not going to surrender. We're not going to surrender. Uh, we are in favor of independence. We think we are in our right to uh, exercise uh, self-determination. We are not better than any other nation, but we are no less than any other nation in the world. So we have to be a free people. And uh, uh, after what has happened, what we will do is uh, basically, if the outcome of the election is positive for the pro-independence party, well, we will uh, continue. We will proceed with our struggle for the uh, freedom of our people, like so many other nations and peoples in the world have done. We will continue. We will prevail, I'm sure. Thank you very much, Mr. Bosch. You're most welcome. Thank you. We now move on to the controversy over the connections of the Imam of Ripoll, thought to have masterminded the August 17th Barcelona attacks. Spanish intelligence admitted a few days ago to having worked with him in the past, and today the Catalan Ombudsman demanded more details. He wants a public explanation and transparency over these connections. The political crisis over Catalonia's push for independence makes the August terrorist attacks seem very far away. But recent revelations showing that the Spanish National Intelligence Agency had ties with the jihadist cell leader put the case once again on the table. Today, the Catalan Ombudsman released a very critical report and called on the intelligence services to offer transparent information to citizens. Però de ver una explicació exhaustiva, pública i transparent de tot l'historial de l'Iman de les seves possibles connexions amb organitzacions d'intel·ligència o policials a Espanya i del per què no van estar advertits els responsables de la seguretat de Catalunya de tot aquest historial. Abdelbaki Essati. This is the name of the imam that organized the most deadly terrorist attacks in Catalonia in decades. In total, the van attack in Barcelona and the subsequent attack in the seaside town of Cambrils left 16 people dead. Essati was killed a day before when the explosives that the terrorists were manufacturing blew up. Although Essati had been in prison for drug trafficking and had ties with jihadist groups, the Spanish police did not inform Catalonia's Mossos de Esquadra of his history. 
Now it is known that Essati was in fact interviewed by the National Intelligence Center to learn more about radical Islamist groups. In his report, the Ombudsman called for measures to improve the coordination between anti-terrorist units in Catalonia and Spain. He also called on the state to fully recognize the capacity of the Catalan police to deal with terrorist incidents. In other news, this October stands as the second best October on record for Catalan hotel bookings. The figure was only higher last year. Over 1.6 million foreign tourists checked into Catalan hotels last month, 4.4% less than the previous year. 4.6 million overnight reservations were made throughout October. It was also the second best figure ever, but slightly less than last year. The main cause? The ongoing dispute between Catalonia and Spain, according to the president of Barcelona's Hoteliers Association. Barcelona's local council reacted to the data, saying that the fall is far slighter than, than some earlier alarmist estimations. Tourists booking rooms in Catalan hotels can also enjoy world-class restaurants during their stay. Catalan cuisine has for a long time been in the top rankings and there's further proof now in the Michelin guide ceremony. The list of restaurants in the country awarded with Michelin stars is now longer. This is very sweet news for a lot of Catalan chefs. Catalonia is well known for its food, ranging from traditional to innovative molecular gastronomy. Here there are 55 Michelin star restaurants, of which three are three star, the highest recognition possible. Make that four, because this week six new Catalan restaurants were added to the prestigious guide. The designations were given out at the Publications Gala in Santa Cruz de Tenerife, attended by professionals and guests alike, and upon receiving one, two or three Michelin stars, the culinary artists heading the select restaurants donned the chef coats exclusive to each particular ranking. Jordi Cruz's Abac joins the ranks of three-star Catalan restaurants such as Paolo Casagrandes Lasarte, Carme Ruscalleda San Pau and El Salleda Can Roca of the Roca Brothers. Indeed, Michelin star distinctions aren't for life. Each year, you must turn them all over again. But having three Michelin stars to begin with definitely helps. I think it will give you some help to do it better, because when you have Doncs aquestes tres estrelles també ve, ve més gent, tens més clients, tens més ganes, tens més gent que et vol portar els seus productes perquè els faci servir. Et dona moltes eines no? per fer-ho fer bé. Meanwhile, two Michelin stars were given to both Dos Cielos, run by the Torres Brothers and Disfrutar, led by Eduard Chetruc, Uriol Castro and Mateu Casanyes, formerly from the iconic El Bulli restaurant. Chef Albert Adrià, brother of the chef behind El Bulli itself, was also awarded one star for his restaurant, Enigma. Caelis retained its one star after its relocation, and the picturesque Peralada Casal earned the first extension as well. So, with this whole new range of Michelin-approved restaurants, we hope you enjoy your meal, or as they say in Catalan, bon profit. Can you encapsulate the magic of nature in a product? At the lake of Ibazi Villa Sana in Catalonia, fog is so prevalent that an ornamental perfume has been made to commemorate it. Made of all natural materials, it pays homage to the scenic beauty. Take a look and see you tomorrow. <laughs>